Kaminsky, along with former Michigan defensive back Marcus Ray. Marcus Eastern was a bowl team two years ago. They thought they would build off that last year, but it didn't really work out that way, did it? No, it didn't work out, and they left a lot of meat on the bone, losing a lot of close games. This football team has to win on the road and win close games if they're going to achieve their goals. Take a look at this graphic here. That Army Eastern Michigan game came down to the two-point conversion. Coach Creighton said he would do it all over again and go for two, but that's the reason they didn't make a bowl game in 2017. The mantra for the Eagles this year, focus, fight, and finish. Four players will help that cause. Well, focus, fight, and finish is going to start with these four captains, preseason all-conference guys. These four leaders have to make sure that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and it always starts with captain leadership. And they got a big playmaker on defense, Max Crosby, a senior. Look for him all over the field tonight in the linebacker position. Max Crosby is a sensational football player. He gets off the ball well, plays well in space. The 11 sacks were six tied for sixth in the nation last year. He gets in the back, but he's very disruptive, plays with a lot of energy, and he gets that defense fired up. Let's talk about the Hawks. Monmouth has some punch on offense from this guy, number nine, Reggie White. He is a big threat in their passing game. You're talking 6'3", 210 pounds with a wide catch radius. He can catch any ball. He runs very polished routes. He's on record-setting pace. Eastern Michigan is going to have to design some coverages to keep an eye on number nine all night long. We're set to start the season here at Eastern Michigan. The Eagles battling the Monmouth Hawks. Our kickoff when we come back. Chris Creighton leading Eastern into battle, and this crowd is revved up. We're back with our kickoff in just a moment. For today's game, Chris Creighton, his fifth year on the job. And again, the Eagles have become a very competitive team here in this Mid-American Conference. His counterpart, Kevin Callahan, how about this? What a run he's had, 20-plus years. This is his 26th year at the same school. And again, they are a team that is going to be a big threat in the Big South this year. Coach Callahan has been around for a long time. His players understand the Hawks football culture. That says a lot when you can stay at one program for 26 years and have all the success that he's had. They were a playoff team a year ago, and this football team returned 16 starters. So that means they got some guys that understand the program goals and what's expected here in Ypsilanti tonight. Eastern Michigan wins the coin toss, but they defer. So Monmouth is going to go on offense here, and the Hawks will watch that opening kickoff go out of bounds, and the Eagles will get their defense on the field first. Monmouth a chance to set the tone offensively. As we take a look at our officials, Matt Gallagher is our referee tonight. Ball placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Marcus, talk about the jitters, the adrenaline rush that comes on opening night for players. What to explain that process, how that works out. Well, you really can't sleep the night before. There's no more studying. You've practiced against your own guys for eight months. You're ready to go against another football team. And I think once you get that first play out the way, whether it's running down kickoff or playing offense or defense, the jitters go away. Starting quarterback, Kenji Bahar is a good quarterback. He can beat you with his arm or his legs. He has got the run of the playbook for Monmouth. They like all the things that he does when they are on offense. But he'll have a big challenge against a very solid Eastern Michigan defense. First down from the 35, little short run. Not much. They swarm on that ball carrier. Pete Guerrero got the handoff. He is the featured running back for them, but he only gets maybe a yard on first down. Actually, where they spot the ball, it's about a gain of one or two yards. You see a big rock wall in the middle. And that defensive line already getting a good push. When you run a 3-4 or 4-3 defense with a stand-up defensive end, you really need to get penetration. Little play fake on second down. Lots of time and a deep throw far sideline overthrown. 
Let's take a look at our impact players. We mentioned Reggie White in the open against Max Crosby. Key matchup there when Monmouth has the ball. Yeah, exactly. If Max Crosby gets some pressure like he did on that last play, Reggie White won't have a chance to catch a ball. But Reggie White, on the other hand, he runs good routes. He's actually wide open on that, and the ball was just overthrown by Bahar. Brings up third down and eight. That was a play that they should have had. Let's see if they can connect. They go to the same spot, complete, and a first down pickup as Reggie White. The coverage was better, but the throw was on the money. Yeah, but Reggie White cut his split. He was 10 yards from the sideline and telegraphed that outcut around the third and eight. He had all day to throw the ball, but the, the, the pass outside in the numbers was key. So the first down pickup for Monmouth moves the football out to their own 47 yard line. You see Monmouth going with tempo offense and they, after the first down catch, they sped it up and had that play already called. And now they're taking their time on second down and reading the defense. They're gonna try and run wide here with not much success. Vinny Grosso came off the edge, but Eastern Michigan swarming to that ball, shutting it down. It's going to bring up another third down and long. Yeah, watch number 90, Jeremiah Harris, right in the middle of your screen. He didn't make the play, but he made the football cut back to all of his pursuing, pursue defenders. Third and long, lots of time here, but they throw underneath complete and a big stick after Guerrero grabs it. Eastern Michigan right on that ball, and Monmouth will have the punt. Yeah, Kevin McGill Jr., he, he actually got a great read and break on the football. He played his own coverage. He was responsible for the flats, which is just a short outside area by the sideline. Excellent play for the young man from Maryland. So the drive dies just short of midfield, and Eastern Michigan will get the football. Colin McCreary on to punt for Monmouth. And this is Blake Bantam standing at his 10-yard line. One move gets him out to about the 20-yard line where Eastern Michigan will roll out their offense. Last year, Marcus, Eastern Michigan had their had a very experienced quarterback. That would be broken rollback this year. Things not quite as settled as Tyle Weger is expected to start this game, but they're probably going to take a look at some other quarterbacks, at least probably one other one. First down. Wiggers is a transfer from Iowa. Kid that really didn't get a chance to play there, found a home at Eastern Michigan. Coach Creighton welcomed him with open arms. Talked to Coach Ferentz about it. They mutually agreed it was a good fit. Now the young man's gonna get a chance to play some college football. Out of Lake Orion, Michigan. 6'4", he's a tall guy. And we're gonna find out if he can lead this offense, but he can start with his back to the wall. Local kid, he's probably got a lot of friends and family here tonight. And you know, it's one thing to have taken a lot of practice reps like he did with Iowa, but when you're the guy under center and it's, you know, the first series of the season, that's going to get your adrenaline rolling a little bit. We'll see how he handles it here. The Eagles are backed up to their own five yard line. Quick throw, first down, complete in the flat to Ian Erickson, who stays up, gets outside the 10. So that, that's one way to get your new quarterback going is to call a safe, conservative swing pass. That was a designed swing pass, a glorified toss sweep, and Erickson did the rest, made a great catch. Now they have a little bit of breathing room so they can run their offensive packages. Gain of three on first down. Sorry, gain of seven on first down. They hand off up the middle. Oh, Erickson tried to get some air and could not clear his eagle lineman. Let's take a look at our, our impact players when Eastern Michigan has the football. 
We're going to key on Shaq Van, a premier running back for them. He's been injured the, off and on the last few years. And Jaron Pendarvis is the guy tasked with shutting that running attack down. Yeah, Pendarvis is a guy that makes a lot of plays. He even had a pick six last year from his defensive line position. And he really commanded a double team on that last run. Third down and just one. The ball is, oh, they call it a first down. Sorry, they moved the chains. Looks like Eastern's got the ball at the 15 yard line. Now Start Eastern Michigan's going to call Michigan. a timeout. They're first. It'll be Certainly not something timeout. that Chris Creighton wants to do, but our first break here at Reinerson Stadium, scoreless between Monmouth and EMU. This is the guy who lit up the offense for Eastern Michigan. Brogan Roback set a lot of school records here at Eastern Michigan, and he's playing well in the NFL now with those Cleveland Browns. Too. Yeah, he looked good the other night, but I don't think you can replace a guy like Roback. What you do is just try to patch up his production with other receivers, a new, not necessarily a new system, but you don't ask the next guy to be the previous guy. Yeah, Eastern's got a good running game and some good defense around him. Play fake, they throw, it's complete underneath. And again, they go to Bantam. Again, a short passing game so far for Eastern Michigan. As this first half unfolds, things might open up, but they're playing it safe right now. Yeah, short passing game is just a glorified run game. They get a couple of yards, pressure, and they throw it outside. It is complete. That's Matthew Sexton on the Eastern catch for another Eagle first down. Well, right now, Weavers looks like he's in a good rhythm. The play calling has been very favorable to his skill set. He's throwing the ball outside and short if you watch his completions. And then they're allowing the receivers to catch and do the rest after they get the football. From the 30-yard line, they run. This is Van. He gets, oh, he got tackled from behind. He had space in front of him. Taken from behind after a gain of about two or three yards. Yeah, that's DeJuan Cooper, sophomore linebacker. He had an excellent fr freshman season. And now you, you saw his athletic ability. Uh, he's only 6'3", 200, and, you know, 200 pounds or so. But you saw his athleticism. He saved the touchdown with that tackle. Second down and eight. They go to Van again. This time he tries to get the edge, gets a little bit, not much. Finally pushed out of bounds by Jawan Fari. That's a good call to run the ball on the perimeter, but that defensive line, they have to get up the field a little bit more. It's tough to really stop that play because it hits really quick on that, on that outside zone play. But if you're a defensive end, you have to see you just take a peek inside, and if you get up the field, you can see it. You can't stop your feet. Or a guy like Van will bend the corner on you in a hurry. Brings up third down and four. Quick throw, complete underneath. Little screen and a first down, and they move the chains again. Boy, I tell you what, the Eastern passing game, they get Blake Bantam there on that safe route. And Uyghurs has been picking apart this Honda defense so far with short passes. Yeah, you see the inside wide receiver screen to the slot receiver. And they hurry up and come back to Bantam. He gets clocked, but makes the reception right near midfield. Yeah, that's tight near barrier. Preseason all-conference corner. Had a great year last year. Double-digit pass breakups. You see he's a physical guy, even at 175 pounds. Uyghurs play fakes, throws, and completes into that slot receiver, and they can't bring him down. I'll tell you what, that's line Leitu, who continues to rise up the depth chart. Got to correct the pronunciation. It's Latu Linae. 
And Eastern Michigan in that hurry up mode, catching the Hawks a little off balance. Yeah, this tempo is really keeping this Hawks defense on their heels. And Eastern's actually substituting guys in and out and still going hurry up. But what they're doing offensively is what's called an RPO, and it's, and it's where the offensive lineman run block and the quarterback decides if he's going to throw it down the field or hand it to the running back. The linemen never know, and that's why they were able to complete that last pass. Eastern at the Hawks 33 yard line. And they run, they get Erickson. Uyghurs a perfect six of six so far in the air for Eastern. Mind you, they're all conservative passes, but still you like that precision, especially on your opening drive. And there's no reason right now to force the ball and going downfield. This, this, this drive is very methodical. And they're playing Eastern Michigan football. They're, they're comfortable. They're getting the open. They're finding the open man, and they're playing well up front. Third and two from the 31. They pound it inside, pushing ahead. They're right at that first down marker, but a flag is thrown. The other thing that Eastern's doing is they're getting in short yard situations on third down. It's hard to play defense when you're in third and two. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 87. Ten yard penalty beat from the spot of the foul. Third down. Well, that is the kind of opening night mistakes you don't want if you're Chris Creighton. That foul is on Sexton. And they go all the way back to the 41. And they've got about 11 yards to go for a first down. You go from third and one to third and 11 on one mental error. Now we're going to find out if Uyghurs is going to try to move the sticks or get in field goal range, or this is four down territory as well. Uyghurs going to throw far side, caught. A jump ball catch on that far side and the hookup is with Dylan Drummond, a guy who is young, inexperienced, but making his presence felt in the Eastern passing game, and they hurry up and go there at the 15. That was a great back shoulder throw by Uyghurs, put a better catch. Van from the 13 has nowhere to run on that far edge. After a big play, they came right to the line of scrimmage to try to catch the defense while they were licking their wounds and giving up a big pass for third down. Here's Drummond going up high. Boy, that's good concentration and good coverage in the secondary by Monmouth. Yeah, that's great football. It's good offense, good defense. It's the offense point that battle. But he, I like how he concentrated and looked the ball in his, in his hands. Eastern on their opening drive. They're at the Hawks 16. All kinds of time. They throw near corner, wide open. Touchdown. Bantam on the catch, and he was wide open. Eastern on the board. See right here, Wiggers has all day to throw the football and he finds Bantam on a post corner route. It was a coverage breakdown. That post corner is a big route in the red zone. Yeah, that's just too easy. The extra point is good. And a seven time out of the field. Lead Eastern scoring Immediate. On opening drive. And what about that quarterback play? Tyler Wiegers, a eight of eight in the passing game for 88 yards on the drive, and Eastern is in good shape. Our first score of the season here at the factory, the Eagles taking flight, leading the Hawks 7-0. Last year at this time, that guy in the blue T-shirt was tearing it up for Eastern Michigan. That's their former quarterback, Rogan Roback. 
the guy who is wearing number two today for Eastern in the wide receiver position. That's Blake Bantam. He's paying homage to Darius Reed. And he is living up to uh, the height and playing well as Eastern kicks it off. And it is taken by Lonnie Moore inside the five. He tries to get wide and gets out to about the 17-yard line. Well, you know, it, it sounds like a cliche, but you can't make mistakes on the road like they just did. And there's Bantam. Again, wearing that number two in favor of, in honor of Demarius Reed. The deuce is on the loose. And he is making noise so far with a touchdown catch early in this football game. Bahar, they hand off on first down. Guerrero gets a little bit of room on that edge, gets out to about the 20, maybe for a gain of two. You see one of those captains, Rockwall, number 51, playing that Mike backer. I mean, he really read his keys and got to the point of attack. That should have been more than a two-yard game. There's Roback, the man with the plan, trying to make it to happen at the next level. Had a great career here. It's nothing like coming back to your old stomping grounds and standing on the sideline. They go back to Guerrero looking for room. Uh-uh, Eastern right there to meet him at the point of attack. Other Eagles that are in the NFL now will be touching on them at halftime. And uh, this is a program, again, that Chris Creighton has really brought stability, consistency, and they are building off of what they've done the last couple of years. Brian Dooley, a freshman, that's a big hoss up front for them. Down there from Bowling Green, Ohio, just an hour away. That was a big play for a freshman in his first game. Third down and six. Barhart's going to pump fake. Now traffic in the pocket. Down he goes. Ball is loose and picked up. And the Hawks grab it. And let's see, they haven't blown the whistle yet. So that play may be extended a little bit. There is also a flag on the play. Boy, a lot of pocket pressure there. Things just shrunk. It was good coverage downfield, though, by that Eastern secondary. That's well, why you was a fumble. So Recovered by the offense. Fourth down. So Monmouth will have to punt again. And this time, Eastern's going to get good field position. They started their opening drive very deep in their own territory. The yeah, Eastern's going to get great field position. And they have Blake Bannon back to return. And he's as dangerous as he gets in this conference when he touches the football. You saw him catch that last touchdown pass. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So Monmouth taking the delay of game penalty, and they're going to give up five yards. And Bantam standing practically at midfield. And now the officials are going to huddle up and sort this out. Coach Callahan didn't like that call. And that's one of the things you, that most people see in week one, especially early in the first quarter, is penalties. Delay of games, guys not lining up right. So McCreary standing at his own five yard line. Monmouth's opening drive took them almost to midfield, but the second offensive possession didn't lead to much. And Eastern Michigan's going to get their offense back on the field with probably very good field position. Gonna put a lot of stress on this defense when they get the ball on the short field. But that's when you kick, your character gets tested as a defensive unit. It's called sudden change. You got to get out there and try to hold the offense, keep them from getting in the end zone. McCreary boots it. Bantam at his 44. Let's see if he can create after the kick. 
And he wheels his way up the sideline down to about the 34 or 33 yard line. A short field for Eastern Michigan. And we'll take a timeout here at the factory. 7 0 is our Eastern lead. Timeout on the field. Media timeout. The Eagles have had some very good wideouts here in recent years with Bailey and Porter and whatnot, but the next man up looks like uh, they've got some guys that are ready to rise to that challenge. And Harris and Drummond and Bantam and company will all try to vie for some catches here in this offense for Eastern Michigan. And so far, it's been very good for Tyler Wiegers, and he's got a short field now starting from the 34-yard line. Deep throw, wide open, in stride, caught. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan strikes again. And they're getting the ball all over the place. Bryce Kemp, the tight end, caught it. Boy, just a double pass. Right here, you see Holder throws a great pass down the field. And Bryce Kemp just hauls it in, takes his time. That's one thing you see. It's just like a turnover. When the ball is on a short field, Dan, the, expect some trickeration. Now they're going to try and run for this point after. That's a bust. Bad snap. So not perfect so far for Eastern Michigan, but yeah, the bad snap leads to no extra point. And that's a week one blunder. It's just, just a bad snap. He snapped it into the ground. And then that's something you'll see in week one. I'd be surprised if we see it later on in the season. But that's something that you only rep in practice. Then you start to do it live in the game, and it's not the same. Let's take and a look at the touchdown here, Dan. You get the double pass. Down the field holder. Looks like a former quarterback the way he did that. But Kemp actually sold that play because he fake block. Secondary fell asleep. The Hawks are going to have to communicate better and play with their eyes, Dan. You know, it's one thing when a quarterback sees a wide receiver that wide open, you get a little bit jittery. But when Holder, a non-quarterback, sees that, <laughs> didn't face him at all, though. That, num that pass was right on the numbers. And it's a 13-0 Eastern lead. The only good news is Monmouth will get the football back. And they'll bring it out of the end zone. This is Lonnie Moore taken from behind down at about the 16-yard line. Eastern Michigan coming out strong here in their opening game. You know, they, we talked with Chris Creighton this week. And, we even reflected on last year in that open, that six-game losing streak took their whole season off the rails. But, you know, for Chris, he told us that was really, there was a lot of positive things to take out of that. They felt like, you know what, you change a few things in a few games, and they're maybe improving from what they were doing two years ago. Yeah, they, they made a lot of positive strides and learned some hard lessons, unfortunate ones. They didn't reach their goals. They were they thought that they were going to be for real. That was their motto. And they throw near side. It's complete to Reggie White. White getting a lot of attention from the Eastern secondary as well he should. Well, this offense is going to, if they're going to get it going, number nine has to touch the ball. And this front offensive line is going to have to give Bahar more time. But eventually you're going to see Reggie White go deep, but with broke. But with Brody Hoying back there, those total yards, Eastern's dominating so far. Play fake. They're going to maybe throw back. Uh-uh. They'll just air it out. Eastern got pressure on the quarterback. This Eastern defense is playing very fundamentally sound. The safeties are taking the proper alignments, making the reads. And it's really hard to throw the ball down the field for any quarterback versus a very disciplined secondary. Then this Eastern front seven, they're, they're getting after it. I mean, they are beating the Hawks' offensive line off the ball. 
Third and one from the 27. Boy, they need to convert just to keep that offense on the field. They're going to get this in a run and an explosion breakout. This is Devell Jones brought down inside Eastern Territory. Got beyond the linebackers and off he went for a big time pickup and a first down for Monmouth. This is a simple split zone, but he got great blocking. Eastern Michigan didn't fit the run properly. Jalen Phelps came down and in a free safety and took a bad angle. Closed his eyes, it looked like, but touchdown save and tackle by Calderon. It's a gain of 22 yards. Oh, a big time hit to end that play decisively. Pete Guerrero on the carry, but that didn't really play out the way he thought it would. No, we're talking about Brody Hoying, and I mean, he just lowered the boom with a pitcher perfect tackle, ran his feet, rang his own bell just a little bit, but he led the NCAA last year in fumbles recovery, fumble, fumble recoveries. Then he also forced four fumbles, and you see why, the way he hits and gets after, that was a textbook perfect tackle. Hasn't gotten up yet, though, Hoying. Boy, we call his name and number a lot. I mean, you want to talk about the first team all-conference safety last year. Watch him read it. Lowered the boom. That's just good football. That's a clean hit. And that was a violent collision. Rang his own bell just a little bit. It's good to see a young man sitting up. That's how those guys from Coldwater, Ohio, smack people. They just, oh, they just. Oh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Coldwater, is that anywhere near Columbus by chance? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, he came off the field looking good, so maybe just a, a, a momentary pain. And there is a, a little work to do right now for Monmouth as they are looking at second and 16. After Hoying blew that play up. Play fake, pass caught in the slot, but no yardage after the catch. And Reggie White, well, I'll tell you, they're covering him. He's still catching the football. The problem is they can't get him in open space to go after the catch. No, not after that one drive in the beginning where he made a good third down catch and an out there. But they're moving him around. Normally he lines up on the wide side. He's the widest receiver close to the sideline right there. He was at slot receiver. So they're trying to move him around so to get him matched up on those linebackers. Third down and 12 from midfield. Underneath throw, it's a crossing route to White. Stays up, gets right about to that first down marker, maybe a yard or two short. Yeah, this passing game is centered around Reggie White. Right here, this was a design shallow cross. You see receivers blocking. While they're downfield, they knew number nine was getting the football. Fourth and two, they're going to go for it. They're going to throw, uh-uh. Just too much pressure and nobody open downfield. They take the gamble and they come up empty on fourth down Eastern football. I call that a coverage sack. Yeah, I'm a little biased to defensive backs, but Eastern lined up in man-to-man -man coverage, took away the receivers, and they just rotate. Actually, it was zone coverage. And Brody Hoying back on the field, he took away the, the throw. He was the down safety. He rotated so quick it looked like man-to-man, -man, but that was excellent by the Eagles defense. Terry Myrick was the one bringing the pressure from the edge. And I'll tell you what, these numbers for Uyghurs look awfully good. And they love the point production here. Still first quarter here at the factory for Eastern Michigan. Maybe a gain of one or two. The Eagles keep it on the ground with Ian Erickson. That's a good call on first down just to get the offensive line awoke. Because those guys are going to have to recreate that line of scrimmage. Eastern's not going to be able to just throw the ball around for four quarters. They're going to have to establish some type of run game, especially moving forward with their schedule. Riggers with some time. Now he's going to run. There's that good footwork we talked about. 
again, we didn't know quite what his strengths were. And maybe the Eastern coaches didn't know what his strengths were, but that's a nice precision run there for a first down. More importantly, it was a great decision. He didn't force the ball. There was nothing downfield, and he, and he made a good decision. From the 42, this is Erickson. Again, Erickson kind of the workhorse in the run game for Eastern Michigan. We're going to call Shaq Van's number a little bit more as this game unfolds, but Erickson's been doing most of the rushing work for Eastern. Well, this Monmouth front four, they're playing well on first down versus the run, and, and they get eight guys in the box. They just include a safety somewhere near the linebackers, and, and it makes them a little more vulnerable in the pass game. I think Eastern Michigan is setting up the pass game with, little, with, with these run plays so that they can throw the ball over the defense's head. Eastern working on offense from the Hawks 39 yard line. And that's going to end our first quarter of football here at Eastern Michigan. That's the end of the, the first Eagles quarter. Have gotten some very good quarterback play and two touchdowns. A 13 0 lead over Monmouth here at the factory. Second quarter football when we come back. It's been an exciting start for Eastern. The Eagles leading the Hawks. We're back in just a moment. Now the Eagles came out swinging the hammer as they are wont to do. And when they took the field, they just kept on swinging. There's the wide open touchdown catch by Bantam. Another wide open touchdown grab off a double throw and hoying on the big hits. And it's been a big feel good first quarter for Eastern Michigan so far. What do we like about what the Eagles have done, Marcus? Well, number one, they've been very efficient on offense. As you see the stats, 122 pass yards really jump out two for two on third down. They had two penalties in there, but they're taking care of the football. But this offense is a well-oiled machine, and they've opened up the playbook, and they've given Weakers a chance to prove that he's the right guy replacing Robin. So they're back on offense and trying to work it on first down. They run near side and don't get a whole lot. New quarterback for Eastern Michigan. We knew that they would probably play two different guys today. Mike Glass getting the nod to come in second behind Uyghurs. Mike Glass, this is a guy, Marcus, that kind of rose up the depth chart fairly quickly. And he's getting some reps tonight here. Third down and six, and they try to run wide, and they've got Erickson on the edge for a first down. So in terms of our scouting report on our second string quarterback, if you will, for Eastern Michigan, what do we know about Glass? Well, the, well, the thing we know about Glass, we saw Eastern ran a different package, and they were able to get him out on the perimeter as you see him rolling out, making this throw. Throwing on the run, incomplete. Bantam, probably a pass interference call against Monmouth. Well, that's a pretty good throw on the run by Glass. Yeah, Glass has a, a different skill set. He, he, you know, you can run quarterback draws, sprint outs, plays like that with him. Pass interference, defense number 38. 15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. And really, when, when, when you have, yeah, he just mugged them. I mean, that's easy. It's Anthony Bud, the safety. Tell you what, I play safety. It's tough playing man to man back there. But but that's that's actually a good route by Bantam. And he probably would have caught that football. Glass threw a pretty good ball high and outside, exactly where you want to put it. And, and I think right now, this is an open competition. I, I, I don't think Coach Creighton has settled in on one quarterback. So now both guys will get a chance to compete and do what they do and run this offense. Now Glass wants to make that decision as tough as possible. He'll throw and in the middle, end zone, touchdown. Right in the center of that end zone to Dylan Drummond. Again, Drummond made a big catch early in that first quarter and a touchdown grab here in the second.
Let's take a look and see. Glass stares down his receiver the whole time, but he actually understood where to put the ball for Drummond on that post pattern. That was a great route. Ball is high, caught the ball with his hands. <laughs> Mike Glass doesn't look like a backup at all. PAT right. is on the money good, and the Eagles bump the lead up to 20 to nothing. Oh, and by the way, two Eastern quarterbacks have been perfect so far tonight. No incompletions for the Eagles in the air. And take another look. Look at the pass across the middle. Great work by our camera crew to get that field level shot from the quarterback's view. You see Glass running down here. Everybody is having a good time on opening night here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. But that's what you want to see. Both quarterbacks, to your point, Dan, have been perfect. And that means we have to give offensive coordinator Aaron King, who is calling the plays, coaches the quarterbacks, give him a ton of credit. That offensive line is playing well, too. Uyghurs came out throwing some, you know, short conservative passes. Last, they opened things up a little bit more, but they're still getting the same productivity. And Eastern Michigan. Three first half touchdowns in what is turning into a feel good home opener here at Pioneer Sid Stadium. Moore at his three yard line. And that's where they'll blow the whistle. And again, the new rule this year this is a, again opening weekend. We're getting you back to, you know, some football basics when those kick returners get those hands up. Well, that explains it right there. Fair catch signal on the kickoff. New rule this year, ladies and gentlemen. All he plays is the 25-yard line. The first down. Spotted at the 25-yard line. I really like that rule change. And then you see the red shirt rule allows players to participate in any four games in a season and still be able to red shirt. Yeah, that's going to make some difficult decisions for coaches. Here's Bahar on first down. Deep throw, Reggie White. Just one step. Short. They stretched it out and could not complete it. Let's go back and revisit that graphic, Reg. Again, the key one, that red shirt rule. It used to be you only had a four-game window at the start of the season to keep your red shirt. Now, coaches have options for the entire season. That's a game changer. That's a game changer. And I think that blocking below the waist not allowed five yards beyond the line of scrimmages is going to be key too, especially for teams that like to run triple option like Navy and guys who cut block all the time. Farhart handing off on second down and long to Guerrero. And speaking of that red shirt rule, that allows a guy like Dylan Drummond, who you just saw catch that last touchdown pass, who's a freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio. He can get in right now, and then he still can play two or three more games in red shirt. And, and I really think it helps with injuries. And as the season gets longer, you got guys playing in bowl games. That, that, that's a great uh, addition to college football. The Hawks working from their own 25. It's third and long. Farhar will by himself some time. Now he'll unload deep and oh, almost caught in stride. A little bit underthrown. And he was targeting Brandon Bats. Boy, he's got some zip on that arm when he wants it. Man, that was a great throw. I mean, he had all day to throw it. Eastern dropped in the soft coverage. Bats got behind the defense. Let's look at the great defensive back play. Playing the, playing the hands of the receiver. When the ball's in the air and you're beat, you don't look back. And the receiver will turn around, his eyes will get big. When he sticks his hands out, that's when you shoot the hands and knock the ball out. And that's what we saw in the last play. McCreary on the punt to Bantam. Boy, that's a big boot. And Bantam lets it go out of bounds. Timeout here at Eastern Michigan. The Eagles looking sharp in the first half of their season. Three touchdown throws from two different quarterbacks. We're time back after field. this. Media time. Washington Stadium, we've got uh, a lot of activity, of course, with this being the first full weekend of college football. We'll take a look at some Eastern Michigan Eagles that are in the NFL, or at least hoping to stay through the, the cuts that are happening this weekend. 
Eagles at their own 35. This is Mike Glass continuing. Sorry, Glass has been pulled out, and Uyghurs goes back in, and they complete. And Bantam stepped out of bounds at about midfield, so the quarterback shuffle continues for Eastern. And Uyghurs under center, but another first down for Chris Creighton. Well, Eastern Michigan is continuing their dink and dunk. I call it basketball on grass, where you pass, pass, pass until you score. Short, quick passes, easy throws for the quarterback, and it's really tough to defend. Wiggers hands off, and there is not much running room there at all for Eastern. That's Willie Parker on the run for EMU. See big 91 Kurt Armour. He got up the field, got some penetration in that backfield. That was a great play. The way he worked down the line of scrimmage. He moves well. 6'3, 260 pound sophomore. Played with his hands, fall off the blocker. Now he gave his defense a chance to defend second and ten. Again, Eastern Michigan perfect in the passing game so far with two different quarterbacks. Play fake, and they complete this one underneath. Bantam still up in open space inside the 30. Finally, white jerseys converge, but not till he's down at the 18-yard line. Let's take a look at a little trickeration. The offensive line went to the left, but the tackle, a lot of missed tackle for the open field, tanks the Bantam with the shifty feet, puts two hands in the hope the ball in traffic. And tied near Barry, a pretty good defensive back, touchdown saving tackle. But Bantam is putting in a lot of work in the factory right now in this first quarter. That's a 30 yard get for EMU, and they are in the red zone. Call at the 19 yard line. They stay on the ground and come near side with Parker, who doesn't get too much. That's a good job. It's Forcing the ball to bounce outside. Coach Creighton really likes the fact that his offense, they're, they're getting positive plays. You're not seeing Eastern Michigan in second and 15, third and 12. And, and, and as a play caller, especially in this area of the field, you always want to come away with some points. But, but I think play calling has a lot to do with their success right now. Uyghurs, lots of time, looking far corner, incomplete. Boy, I saw some contact, but no flag thrown. If Matt Sexton was the intended wideout. Well, it was great cover, and, and I think the ball was thrown a little bit late. It's the first incompletion we've seen, but that's excellent coverage on the back end by Anthony Budd. Remember, I told you that post corner's a big route where the inside receiver runs vertical about 10 yards and breaks out to the back of the end zone in the corner. Yeah, the first incompletion by any Eastern quarterback was thrown right there. Third down and eight from the 17 yard line. Pressure under thrown incomplete. It hits the turf well ahead of the intended wideout, and Eastern Michigan's going to bring on their field goal crew. Well, you see right there, defensive coordinator Andy Bobick, he actually turned up the heat, sent a free safety blitz. You see number six, Kyle Gregory, coming through the offensive line. It's hard to account for a man in that second level blitzing, and he forced a bad throw. Chad Ryland is on for. Looks to be about a 36 yard field goal and it is good. Eastern Michigan in the red zone. No touchdown this time, but they add three more on the scoreboard. A 23 nothing lead. Well, the good news for Chris Creighton is so far based on what we've seen in this first half. He's going to continue to have good options with his quarterback situation. You know, sometimes coaches, they want to see some separation in week one. They want one guy to just take that job over. And granted, you can't really go crazy about Mike Glass based on two throws. But 
everything Eastern Michigan has done from the quarterback position so far tonight, Marcus, has been very good. Well, you got two guys that have played a lot of football. I, or, or Uyghurs hasn't played a lot, but he's taken a lot of reps at Iowa, played behind a couple of good quarterbacks there. And, and when you look at what they're doing offensively, they're playing to their skill set. And Eastern Michigan has been in different situations. Uyghurs started off with his back to the wall. They played on a short field. You see another fair catch. <laughs> They're utilizing that new rule. Well, that's a safety thing. And, you know, for, for the team that's getting the football, you'll take that position most every time starting at the 25. Yeah, and, and when you look at it, if you catch the ball deep in your own territory, this rule doesn't punish a team for re for deciding not to return the ball. That's what I really like, and, and they're really trying to get away from uh, full speed collisions because the kickoff is a 60 yard sprint. Bahar throws the other side. It is complete, and they got some good action over on that far side. Jake Powell on the grab, and the Hawks get it right to that first down marker at the 36. Well, Powell's a preseason all-conference tight end. He, he, he actually catches the ball well. Last year, 23 receptions, 330 yards, and three touchdowns. He's a big part of this offense. 6'6", 230. They throw a screen pass, and they got a little run after the catch. Not enough, though, for Guerrero, who gets maybe a yard. Unfortunately, ran right into his own blocker. You see number 10, Kobe Beltram. He actually missed the tackle, got up off the ground, chased the football down from behind. That's the effort you want to see on film. The Hawks from their 37 play fake, big time pressure, ball incomplete. You know, it's hard to really get a good handle on how Barhar's been playing so far just because he's had a lot of green jerseys in his face when he's been trying to throw tonight. Yeah, he's been under duress. He's been, he's had to move out of the pocket. And I think maybe calling a few more rollout passes. They look like they try to run a little screen there. That's why there was so much penetration. But Eastern Michigan snuffed it out. But he's thrown a couple of good balls too. Should have grounding. Offense number 11. Ball we placed at the spot. Ball. Loss it down. Third down. So intentional grounding. I thought that ball got tipped, but it did not. No, ball didn't get tipped. He just threw it, in, and there's not a white. There's not an eligible receiver in that area, and that's really where he made his error. He was just trying to avoid getting hit by four green shirts. Third down and 21. Third down and 21. Farhar is going to hand off to Guerrero, and he gets some big push back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's not enough for a first down for Monmouth. That's a good safe call on third and forever. I mean, you don't want to force it down the field. Especially with all that pressure that Eastern's been bringing as Bannon will stand at about his 20-yard line to return for Eastern. And they're getting pressure with just four guys. I mean, Eastern's playing a lot of zone football, but that front four is really playing aggressive, getting a lot of penetration. McCreary's going to boot one. It takes a very friendly Monmouth bounce, and let's see if it stops. It will stop at the three-yard line. They almost kick it in the end zone. Let's see where they mark it. So the, a flag on the play. They spot the ball down at the three yard line. You know, in week one, the, the officials get a chance to confer and discuss things that they're going to see later on in the year. Where should the ball be spotted on the three versus the one? Is it where he touched it first? Is it where it stopped rolling? This is what I like about college football, man. 
You enjoy a Friday night. Officials getting a chance to do what they do for the first time. The kids get a chance to get out here back to school at Eastern. It's move-in day. So a personal foul, and we've got Eastern Michigan leading Monmouth as our second quarter continues here from the factory. Eastern Michigan and the Eagles making a lot of noise offensively here in this first and second quarter against Monmouth. We thought that the Eagles would be pinned back with very bad field position, but looks like the officials are going to move that football out to the 20. The end zone. Here's how this punt unfolded. It looked good there, and then they got a little ambitious. And let's see, did the ball touch the line? His body and the ball right goes there. right there. But the body part of the ball touched the white line. Look at this camera work we get right here. Oh. Right there, as you see that elbow, half of his body, the right arm, the right leg. It's been a frustrating night for Kevin Callahan. They just haven't really been able to make any breaks, and Eastern Michigan has played very good so far, especially Mike the quarterback play has been rock solid. Well, I think that personal foul penalty moved the ball up a little bit, too. Back to the quarterback carousel. This is Tyler Wieger's deep ball incomplete. Good coverage, step-for-step -step coverage on Matthew Sexton. Maybe the first deep ball that Wieger's has thrown. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, this was a good pass. It's a little bit underthrown. He had to slow down. That was a catchable ball. Justin Terry, sophomore cornerback out of Brooklyn, New York, was able to break it up. Sexton wants that one back. You don't get very many chances to catch a deep ball. But Uyghurs is showing that he can, he can make all the throws. From the 18-yard line, second and 10 for Eastern. They run in the middle. Get out to about the 25. Erickson on the run. Third and six from the 23 yard line. You see, you get a good look at Erickson. Started seven games last year at four 100 yard games. Led Eastern Michigan in rushing the last two seasons. He's a workhorse. You know, when you say the factory, this is a guy that is one of the cornerstones of the factory. Third and five. A lot of time for Uyghurs and caught. He had to go up and get it, but they bring it down. And again, they're keying quite a bit on Latu Line. Guy who's, uh, you know, starting to make some noise in the Eastern passing game. They move it out to the 32 after the reception by Lene. Here's Erickson powering ahead to the 35. When you really see what's going on in between the tackles, the Hawks are actually fighting. I mean, they're, they're actually clogging up that middle, and it's tough for Eastern to truly get a good run up the middle. I mean, they'll, they'll take a three-yard positive play. See those first downs? Eastern Michigan 14. Monmouth three, that's called ball control. And, that, and that'll wear a defense down eventually when you can't get off the field and when your offense can't sustain drives. Riegers moving up. Now he's gonna run for a first down for Eastern. Outside the 40 to about the 45. The one thing I like about Wiggers so far is his decision making has been on point. Right there, no one was open. He didn't force it. He understood where the pass rush lanes were trying to attack him. And he got a first down on the scramble play. Erickson tries to run wide and gets back to the line of scrimmage. This Monmouth defensive line, they go 10 deep. And they got five seniors. Three fifth-year seniors, 
They got a lot of guys that can play on that front, and I think that's why it's really tough for Coach Creighton to get that running game going up the middle. Van on the run, and there's white jerseys all in front of him. And that's negative yardage for Eastern Michigan. Let me tell you something about this number 50, Daquan Grimes, 5'11", 210, out of Maryland. Watch how he plays. To the right of your screen, that's how you finish a tackle on the sideline. But for a guy that missed the last two seasons due to injury, you wouldn't be able to tell by that last play. He read his keys, he was unblocked, and he played fast, and he ran to the football with the intent to punish. And that's what you want to see out of young defenders. That's a loss of four, and credit Eric Massey with the uh, initial penetration. Little throw underneath, caught, and a great ankle tackle. Ending that play, Sexton on the catch, but the Hawks stop it and end the drive for Eastern Michigan. Out of all of their drives so far, I think that was the one that was probably obviously the least productive. The play call was a little bit different, but give the Hawks a lot of credit. They stopped the run, and then they played fast, and then got Easter in long yardage defense. We, we just showed the graphic for the 14 first downs. But if you're going to fight back into this game, you have to get off the field. They get four yards back. Jake Julian on to punt. Jake Julian back to punt. And Vinny Grasso will fair catch it, and then no, no fair catch. He gets popped and taken down at about the five-yard line. So good coverage by Eastern Michigan on special teams. Well, the universal rule is when the ball's kicked inside the team, you let it roll. If it's over your head, you just let it go. But look at that form tackling. Eastern Michigan's been working on some form tackling with this. Fight, focus, and finish. Look at Sexton. The other thing that makes you nervous is he was backing away from that football when he caught it. That's a great point, Dan. And now his offense starts on the seven-yard line. Flag before the snap. So Barhar trying to... Defense Get something going offensively for Monmouth. They just haven't sustained really much of anything on offense. Granted, they haven't been on the field anywhere near as much as Eastern, but still. Got to find a way to give that defense a break. Yeah, you, you have to. I think this is an important drive for the Hawks. From the 10, Barhar gets the pass off. It's underthrown, intended for Lonnie Moore. Marcus, what would they, what would you guess a halftime speech would be from Kevin Callahan? You know, 23 nothing. Things really haven't gone at all good for you. What kind of a message do you think he's going to give up in his locker room at the break? Well, stay focused. This game is a, is a non-conference game. Use it to get better, get something out of it, but also try to come back and win. You know, you tell your defense, hey, if you don't give up any more points, offense, we're going to get on the board. That's the type of language that you use. You keep the confidence up. You don't, you don't beat them up. You just go out there and keep encouraging them and tell them if they play better, that they'll have a shot. Timeout here in Eastern Michigan. The factory is good for the Eagles. They lead 23 nothing. Lots of work for this Monmouth offense to do. They are looking to break into that scoreboard. And here is Kenji Bahar with uh, a good passing numbers. This is a guy that definitely has a lock on the job. And we've seen some good things out of him tonight, but Eastern defensively has really made him uncomfortable. Yeah, and he's only a junior, and I'm thinking in the next two seasons he should be able to climb the ranks a little bit higher. But the thing is you have to stay healthy and you have to play smart and just run your offense. 
Barha will sling far side, complete to White, who gets tackled short of a first down. Well, Reggie White has shined so far for Monmouth. They use him in a lot of different spaces, and he does a lot of good things. They run. This is Guerrero pounding it out to the 20 for a Monmouth first down. That's a good run. That's a good call. You know, it's third and short. You want to get this offense some confidence, find a way to get to, find it, to get into a rhythm. The thing about Reggie White in his career, 34, 33 out of the first 34 games, he's caught at least one pass. So he's going to get open and he's going to put some work in every Saturday or every time they line up. From the 21, zip throw, tipped and intercepted. Eastern Michigan's Kyle Rockwell on the pick inside the 20. Little bit under throw. And Rockwall picking it off and setting up Eastern with great field position. So you see the factor. Fans at the factory love it. Let's take a look at Rockwall in his pass dropping it right to the left of the screen. Pass was a little low. He played with some awareness, got his arm up, tipped his own pass. Last year he had two pass breakups. Little tip drill action, and that's why you practice it. Sometimes you tip it to yourself. It's good hand-eye coordination, but that was excellent zone coverage. He played his area of the middle of the field. And those linebackers, when they take the appropriate drop, it's hard to throw the ball across the middle. At the 18, this is Mike Glass under center. They run on first down to about the 15. Mike Glass is a guy that you can run zone read with, quarterback draws, but he, don't mistake it now, he's a dual threat guy. You've seen his arm, he can throw it across the middle, deep and outside as well. Well, Eastern's done so many good things offensively so far in this game. Glass, Erickson tries to run it near side, but there's white jerseys containing that play. Well, that's a tough play to run. I mean, that's a jet sweep. Erickson lined up wide, he went in motion. But they didn't fool DeJuan Cooper. I mean, he, he, he's a guy that can run and play in space. He snuffed it out in a hurry. And now Eastern is in the third and 11 situation. Let's see what Mike Glass can do. I, if, if I was Monmouth playing defense right now, I would expect a screen. And when you see trips like that, three guys to one side, watch that post corner from one of those inside receivers. Glass got time, throwing far corner, end zone, caught, touchdown, Eastern Michigan. A fourth touchdown pass today between two quarterbacks. And Latu on the grab for Eastern. They're back in the end zone. Take a look at it again. You see Glass all day to throw the ball. They ran that post corner right to the same spot. That's a big time red zone route. And you would think as a defensive back, you would figure that out at some point. The PAT is good. Glass has two throwing touchdowns and both of them have been very good throws. This one right on the money. Oh, look at that perfect spiral high and over the shoulder where only his receiver can catch the ball. He's not very tall at six foot, you know, six feet. But the thing about it is he's, he, he, he's high on his toes. He stands tall when he throws the ball. He releases it at a, at a high point with a nice spin. Look at those drives. You see Eastern Michigan, that first one went 95 yards. In 15 plays, I think that first one set the tone. You see the one punt in there in the field goal. But to get four touchdowns for Eastern Michigan, that's a big jump from 2017, where they only averaged 26 points per contest. So a raucous first half for Eastern Michigan. 
Offense, check. Especially in that passing game. Not just one guy looking good, but two quarterbacks. And they're doing a great job of replacing those wide receivers from a year ago. I wouldn't be surprised if with this new rule change with this kickoff if, if guys start pop kicking the ball in the air and trying to have their guys run underneath it to make one of those up backs catch the ball you're, you're going to see more onside kicks but if you can't kick the ball out of the end zone then expect to play defense on the 25 yard line every time. Hawks go back to work on offense at the 25. Bahar will throw and complete to White. First down. A sharp throw and a good route moves the chains for the Hawks. But one of the things Coach Callahan can work on right now is his two-minute offense. Forget about the scoreboard. Use this as an opportunity to get it on tape. What would you call if you were losing in a two-minute situation before the half and at the end of a game? 12 yards to the 37. He'll throw and under throw, but it's caught by White. Did they give him possession? Wow, what a great catch. Both guys had their hands on the ball. And well, we, he came out with it. Another big catch by White. But well, we highlighted him at the beginning for a reason. Now watch him high point the football. You can tell he's a basketball player probably who got a lot of rebounds because that's what that becomes. You just got to go out and out athlete some guys. But he is a guy that can light it up in the herd. This is Grasso out of the backfield to about the 30. Boy, three consecutive positive pickups. Let's go back and look at that white catch. That is outstanding. And more importantly, watch the body control. He plays with his eyes. Look how high he went up to get the ball with his hands. You always want to catch it at the highest point. And as a defensive back, it's really tough to defend those type of passes. The Hawks at the Eastern 30. With some spark here late in this first half, the throw is caught by Terrence Green. Green catching it and going down right away at about the 26 yard line. And Eastern's got a player on the turf. Officials time out on the field. Looks like one of their defensive backs. Free safety, strong safety. Carthel Flowers, freshman from Syracuse, Syracuse, New York, but he's up and off the turf. We're going to see a lot of freshmen. Playing, I, I think, in college football with this new rule. Look at Reggie White's career numbers, Dan. I mean, 2,300, third all time, 20 touchdowns. And tonight, seven for 75 in the first half. You know, it's one thing to have those numbers, it's another thing to have those numbers when you are the number one target and the defense knows what's happening. There's a catch out of bounds. Boy. A great catch by Reggie, but he just couldn't stay in bounds. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie's now he got a little bit to say too after that. Let's take a look at this one here on the sideline. He almost tight roped it. Got a little contact on the shoulder. But watch him. Mm. He knows how to use his hands. And, and the thing about a guy who has seven catches in the first half, that means he knows how to get open. And and I, you know his polished routes, the timing with the throws and the quarterback drops, it's all working together. A lot of time now a zip throw incomplete. Looking for Lonnie Moore. We like the live arm that Bahar has for Monmouth. Now he threw that one a little bit too far inside. His receiver was trying to break back out where he had a little more room to wiggle. But you're right, Bahar's arm is live. And we're giving White a lot of credit for the for this his receptions and those catches, but the throws have been outstanding too. Third down and ten. 
charge and the Hawks take a timeout. The, that's their first of the half. It'll be a 30 second. Their first time timeout of this half. Reggie White's offense has been superior so far in this game as we look back at the guy that he's chasing, Miles Austin. What a great career he had, but Reggie White's got him in his target and he's ready to make a move on him. Yeah, he's a senior, so this is his last at bat. Well, receptions, you see he's already did that, but the receiving yards, now, he doesn't run a, a ton of deep routes, and I think they're running them now because they have to, because they're losing, but he moves around. You see, Miles Austin had a great career, you know, in the NFL. I mean, he's a guy that put in some work down there. And now they got another great one. Third down and 10. And the Eagles get a little too amped up and jump. Ball start, offense number 70, five yard penalty, still second down. It's the big fella, left tackle. Mount move, Shabana moving a little bit too soon, but when you got Jeremiah Harris lined up over you, <laughs> you might need to get back a little bit sooner. See the big fella, he's only a junior. Bahar in trouble and stumbling ahead, finally gets put down. And a late flag. Might be a late hit on that quarterback. And maybe targeting. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting call because the forward progress looks like it was slowing down and Bahar became defenseless. We're going to take a look at it. That's like Kyle Rockwall. Number 51 for Eastern Michigan. Let's see how this play ends. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 51. Can't come in that. That play is under further review. Well, and the thing is that the progress of the play was over. It wasn't yeah. like Bahar right. escaped or looked like he was about to maneuver out of there. Here's the targeting rule. You 15-yard personal foul and ejection win. Obviously a defenseless opponent targeting with a forcible hit with the crown of the helmet in any situation. Rockwall did lead with his helmet. Bahar was defenseless. The referees will make the call. They already called. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I understand him coming in, but you got to know when to tap those brakes. You, it, and, and, he, and he, it was his head. Yeah, and also as a player, you have to know the situation in the game. You're up 30 to 0. You're up 30 to 0. They're in a field goal situation. The game's not on the line, but let's take a look from the field view. Right here, he just decides to lead with his helmet. It, it rang his own bell just a little yeah. bit, too, as you see him on his knees. I just don't think the juice was worth the squeeze on that play. I mean, it, it, it just wasn't a good decision by Rockwall. And he, he's been having a great game. He had the interception a couple of series ago. But right there is, is where you just got to say, whoa. whoa. You know, okay, so Marcus, in your day, in the heat of the moment, you know how those competitive juices flow. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know as a defensive player how that can unfold. However, you have to know, how did you set your own uh, parameter for when you could, you know, maybe go right up to that line without crossing it. The way I looked at it was, if I get there, it, am I going to get a solo or an assist? If you're not one of the first two guys there, if you're third or fourth, that's when you lay off. Uh, it, that's how I played 20 years ago. But at the same time, this this could be a huge loss because if he gets kicked out of this one, he misses the first half of the next game too. I mean, and he is a stalwart in that defense. In the middle, he's having a great game, 67 tackles a year ago. He's a senior, so he knows better. But, but the thing is, it's an effort play. Would he take it back if he could? Yes. 
It's going to be a learning tool for everyone involved, and we're going to get the call now. After further review, the, uh, the ruling of targeting has been confirmed. Number 51 has been disqualified. The penalty's 15 yards from the end of the run. It'll be an automatic first down. The other thing, Dan, it was third down. Let's take a look at it in real time. I mean, let's let's just see. Because you, you're you going to see Rockwell hesitate. He thought about it. He was running to the ball. He took a half a slow step. Watch. Here we go. Real time. Focus on 51 right there. Quarterback's Boom. under the rest. So here come the Hawks. They're going to throw in the corner end zone. Incomplete. They took a gamble. Of course, when you're throwing, uh, well, that was not to Reggie White. Or sorry, it was to Reggie White. McGill was the defender. Tell you what, there is no such thing as a risky throw when you're throwing it to Reggie White. No, because Reggie White, I, I, I take him in most one-on-one -on -one matchups, but give McGill some credit. In oh. See, in college, you can face guard. Face guard just means when you don't play the ball and you put your hands up and you defend the pass. From the 15, Barhar's going to run. There's a flag down. He'll throw complete. That's a good catch by Grasso, but it may come back. Two flags are down. And a hold against the Hawks. Holding, offense number 70, 10 yard penalty, second down. Let's see, mm. right there, the left hand, Big Shabana, the left tackle, the left hand got a fist full of jersey. But he got his hands full with Jeremiah Harris. I mean, that, that's, that's no easy task. One of the captains and preseason all-conference guys. Second and 20. Pressure and underthrown. Oh, he might have gotten some good yardage if he could have got it a little bit higher to Pete Guerrero. It's a good job by Eastern by after the penalty, the targeting penalty to respond. Force a holding penalty. And then now, you're looking at third down and long. I, I really think Mama should just run a safe play, keep the ball in the center of the field, and get three points and get some confidence going into the half. Third and 20, they'll take one more shot here. Under a minute to go in our first half. Barhar with his feet extending the play. Now he just tossed it. And it's incomplete. Early on the field's an incomplete Got some pass. good footwork, but not enough to keep that play alive. And now the field goal unit comes out for Monmouth. It's a good stop by the Eagles. Coach Callahan, he really needs his offense to finish this drive the right way, get some points on the board. And then that halftime conversation changes a little bit. You go in there and tell your kids it's zero to zero. Matt Mascara on the field goal, and it is good. Call that from about 42 yards out. His range is up to 50, and the Hawks at least salvaged some offensive points in this first half off the foot of Matt Mascara. And you know, if you're Kevin Callahan, Marcus, the coach for Monmouth, you don't come into this environment and, and expect you to necessarily win on the road. Look at the draw on this kick. Wow. Well, it looks like wide right, and then it just kind of curve balls in. That looks like my golf shot, man. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you, when the green is right, it's right, buddy. Yeah, that's another reason why you and I don't go together, I don't think. <laughs> Oh, I'm not very good. I'm worse than Barkley. <laughs> uh, I was going to say about Callahan, though, you know, you don't really, I mean, the winning and losing takes care of itself. What you always want in the opening game, you just want your team to not beat themselves and compete for four quarters. And I guess you'd have to say Monmouth has not 
checked off the boxes in those two categories so far. Yeah, I agree with you so far. I mean, there's a lot of things that they're going to talk about at halftime as far as correcting mistakes, penalties. The first half of the first game of the year could be sloppy for a lot of teams. It just it just depends on who you are. But Callahan's been around a long time. You're talking about 26 years at one school, so he's seen it all. But I think he he knows what to tell his team, and I think they're going to play a lot better in the second half now that, that all the jitters are out of the way and they feel like they can play with East, Eastern Michigan. And, you know, we talked in the open about Eastern Michigan and where their season kind of went south last year with that six game losing streak right in the middle of the season you know they had just beaten Rutgers at one point so they get a Big Ten road win and that was when the losing streak kicked in so Chris Creighton knows that this team is really not that far off just a matter of a few turns and now that he's got good quarterback play tonight the absence of Brogan Roback that was a big question mark but it looks like the quarterbacks that he has are going to do very good things going forward. If they finish this game the way they started, I mean, Chris Creighton is is going to hang his hat on on this first half performance to say, "Hey, listen, we can be who we want to be in 2018 if they continue to focus, fight, and finish." That's what he's going to say to his team in the second half. Are you going to stay focused? Are you going to keep fighting? And are you going to finish this game? Because they have seen it all in 2017. It's halftime here at the factory. We'll step aside. A 30 to 3 lead for the Eagles at home. Our halftime coverage when we continue here from Reinerson Stadium in Ypsilanti. One half of football in the books here at Reinerson Stadium between Eastern Michigan and Monmouth Hawks. Well, we got an exciting weekend at college football, Marcus. Uh, everybody looks forward to this weekend, maybe more so than any other. Lots of big matchups and all the expectations now start to take shape once teams are on the field. Week one is always important. Everyone's excited and they're ready to hit a different jersey color finally. But you may see a lot of mistakes. I like the matchups that we're going to see, especially in the Big Ten with some of these non-conference matchups. But week one can set the tone for your entire season. Let's take a preview right now. It's a season to fight. Give nothing and take everything. I will. I will. Life is a test that every day we are forced to answer to and for something that is necessary for our survival. We got Let's 30 go. minutes. Let's go. For the rest of our lives. This game is no different. A 17-week capsule of how to survive a season of life. Make sure you're preparing today to go win a championship. Mental exams, physical quizzes, polls, assessments, all about finding the proficiency of not just knowledge, but of determination, drive, consistency, and the insane ability to bring your A game every week. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Because Bs and Cs can turn into Fs if you let them. One failing grade can be held against you the entire semester. A grading curve steep and unforgiving. What was he thinking? Oh my goodness. All the band is out on the field! A test is an event. A test of time. A test of wills. A testament of hope, faith, belief, brotherhood, sacrifice, and family. A perseverance that all leads to a statement of greatness. Crowned by what a champion looks like once the final exam is turned in. Every day, we got a game grab. There are no days off. So there is a preview of all that is yet to come here in the first weekend of college football. So far, so good. We're back with more of our halftime coverage between Eastern Michigan and Monmouth in just a moment. Eastern Michigan with a very solid and impressive first half of football, a 30 to three lead over the Monmouth Hawks. 
And it's Eastern Michigan with a, a dominant lead. Wow, they really put up a whip on the Hawks. So a, a solid first half of football. Dan Gatowski along with Marcus Ray. We saw a lot of good football in the first half. But uh, we're going to take a look now at some, uh, some things outside of this immediate game. Uh, some preseason rankings. Uh, we got some good teams in this Mid-American Conference. Where are they going to kind of end up and, uh, you know, as this whole season kind of plays out? Well, the thing is, you take a look at the MAC coaches preseason poll, you see Eastern Michigan fourth in the West, but they got a first place vote from someone, and you're seeing why in the first part of this football game, obviously Northern Illinois is at the top. Toledo's going to be good, but I really like – of the Western Division in the MAC Conference, it's going to be very competitive. Yeah, Northern Illinois and Toledo invariably are, you know, kind of the lead dogs in this MAC West. We've seen Western Michigan jump up a couple years ago. That was under PJ Fleck, but mm -hmm. there's still a lot of good football that's going to be played in this conference. Now, let's take a look at the national AP poll. No surprise seeing Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia, three Big Ten teams in that top 10. Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. So, again, the thoroughbreds are back where they usually are in the top 10. Yeah, and, and then you look at the second half from 11 to 20, that's where you get the Spartans in there, Michigan, Notre Dame. They're going to tee it off tomorrow. And what you see in these preseason polls are the same teams every year at this time. But what's going to happen, it's going to be a lot of moving and shaking. A lot of conferences cannibalize themselves. That Big Ten East, arguably the best conference in college football. Ohio State has to go play at number 16, TCU. So, you know, new coach Taggart down in Florida State. It's going to be an interesting race this year. But I think some of these teams are a little more balanced, though, outside of Alabama and Georgia and Clemson. Those next 18 spots. I think are pretty much wide open. We're going to get into our first half highlights. A lot of good for Eastern Michigan. Their quarterbacks were rock solid here. We'll pick up our first half highlights and halftime stats when we continue here at Feinerson Stadium. Eastern Michigan with uh, a lot of good things going for them. A first half lead and then some over Monmouth 30 to 3. First half, Monmouth uh, came out on offense and uh, didn't get much going on their first possession. But Marcus, Eastern Michigan's offense clicked from the minute they got on the field. And they started with their backs to the wall. They came out with a 15-play, 95-yard scoring drive. And I think that set the tone for the rest of the first half. But I really like the play calling. When you look at some of the Eagles in the NFL, Rogan Roback, he was the beneficiary of this play calling to T.J. Lang right here in Detroit. Bailey, one of those receivers we talked about. You got Pat O'Connor. But look at those career numbers down there. You see a Super Bowl champion played 47 games. Roback's career numbers, second all-time leading passer. Look at Sergio Bailey, those 16 touchdowns, 1,700-plus yards. But look at those tackles for loss, 28 and a half by Pat O'Connor, seven force fumbles. I mean, that's a good-looking group. And, and and that's just a testament to what Coach Craig is doing here in Ypsilanti. He's recreated this program and given it an identity, and they believe that they should win every game they play. A 30-3 lead for Eastern Michigan on Monmouth. We'll jump into our first half highlights when we come back to Ypsilanti. Well, Eastern Referee Michigan's offense Mike got check, the one, jump. Two, Let's take a look at how this first half unfolded, Marcus. Well, you see Dylan Drummond going up top, making a big play. That gives us confidence, all the confidence to Uyghurs to come back and find Blake Bantam in the back of the end zone on their favorite route in the red zone, that post corner. Now a little trickeration. You see Isaac Holder with the double pass. Looked like a former quarterback. Tosses it to Bryce Kemp. He was wide open. They're taking advantage of some miscommunication, but the Hawks come back with a run of their own. Jones down the middle of the field, getting a carry. That was probably one of their more positive plays. But this has been the summary of the first half, is that pass rush of the Eagles front four, the accuracy of the quarterback. You see Mike Glass getting a chance to get in there, throw two touchdown passes, found Drummond, and then Rockwall. Played the first half, got ejected on target penalty, but before he left, he was very productive. You see the interception there. Glass comes back with a perfect spiral to the back of the end zone over the throw shoulder. 
to Lee Mack. Eastern Michigan's having a good time for him. Yeah, you bet your quarterback play has been sharp and uh, they have just been able to control this game and they will get the football to start this third quarter. And there's Bantam deep. And he will not return it. And let's pick up our quarterback numbers. Between Uyghurs and Glass, those two guys were dynamite. Very accurate passing on both by both guys, taking care of the football, zero turnovers. That's a really high QB uh, rating right there. You look at the first half stats, score speaks for itself. The rush yards, not very much production, but then the pass yard, 211 for Eastern Michigan, 16 first down. But more importantly, their third down percentage, five out of seven, is what kept them on the field for so long. So Uyghur stays in at quarterback, little toss in the flat, and it is complete. There's going to be a lot of different guys getting touches in this second half, certainly for Eastern Michigan. That's a, that's a good tackle by Gregory, though, in space, because that was going to be a big play in this first half, in the very first play of the second half. So that's a loss of one yard. See, they, go, they run that check with me to call the play from the sideline. Step back and complete far side. Bantam stays up, gets out to the 30. And I think Eastern Michigan really needs to focus on playing like the score is zero to zero. Like play a clean game, get better, work on a few other things in your package. Coach Callahan can do the same thing. He can mix it up, play some different defenses. Third and four. Uyghurs on the run, and he gets stopped a yard short. Almost got enough space, but uh, found it taken down just a yard shy. So it's a three and out for Eastern Michigan. Yeah, that's what Chris Creighton certainly wants to avoid. You know, you know the, the score is going to take care of itself, but sustain quality possessions. And they come out with a three and out here to start the second half. I mean, there's still a lot of football to be played. And now you're going to find out if you're an Eastern Michigan coach, what type of team you have when you play with the lead. It's one thing to be in close games and lose at the end. But how are you going to respond when now you're up front? Are you going to focus, fight, and finish? Julian on the punt with no return. <laughs> What's the mindset, do you think, for Monmouth coming out here? I know what you said coach was going to talk about in the locker room, but from a player's vantage point, when the, the score is really kind of out of hand starting the second half, well, what would you say is their mindset? One possession at a time. You try to score whenever you can and just play football and then see where things are with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, but right now you play like it's zero to zero, probably have a little bit more urgency on offense. It's not a hurry up situation, but you want to move and try to get as many plays as you can. From the 25, they run. Guerrero does a good job getting about five yards to the 30 yard line. Guerrero on the player of the year watch list. Second team all American track guy, won the 100 meters, 200 meter dash. So if he gets in that secondary, he really can fly. Fumbled snap, Guerrero picks it up. Pretty much a busted play from that point. Yeah, you just want to play clean football. That's the, that's a critical component for what Monmouth needs to do here going forward. Just play it clean. And don't beat yourself. Get positive plays. Eliminate the penalties and the mental errors. I mean, on some of those touchdown passes, they just broke down. Miscommunication and a lack of execution. The ruling on the field of the previous play is under review whether the quarterback's knee was down when possessing the football.
take a look. He took his eye off the football. The knee is down right there. Yeah. And he's got possession of the ball. He's down. That, that's a good, good job by those officials. And, and maybe even Coach Creighton saying, hey, wait a minute. He was down. Great, great camera work, too, by our crew. We mentioned Matt Gallagher as the referee tonight. Replay official Steve Rajanic. And based on that video, that's uh, that's a down football in the backfield. Let's take a look. The start off with the snap was a little bit low. Bahar still got to get it, but at this point, he needs to understand that he's he's still live. And if he's touching the football with his knee on the ground, it's a dead play. And you were just talking about clean football. That's that's the little, those are some of the little things that Coach Callahan is going to stress when they watch this film. Now that's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> that's not clean. He's going to say, hey, now what are we doing, son? But, but that makes a difference in a third and nine versus a third and two. And when you shoot yourself in the foot, it really lowers the After further review, successful. it's been determined that the quarterback's knee was touching the ground when possessing the football while it's on the ground. It'll be third and nine at the 26 yard line. The play clock will be set to 25 seconds. Both the game clock and play clock will start on my signal. So it is negative yardage. Ball at the 26 yard line. So it goes the wrong way for Monmouth. Third and long for Bahar. Little screen in the middle. It's complete into space for White. Can he get out? Uh-uh. Good pursuit by Eastern. Boy, Reggie White, you just want to see him touch the ball every time. There is a flag on the play. That was an excellent run after the catch, that first move he made. Because he was getting ready to run into a brick wall. I think Jalen Phelps. After the play was over, personal foul, defense number 12. 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Number two can remain in the ball game. That's on Jeff Hubbard. And that keeps the drive alive for Monmouth. Greg White in space, Dan. Watch the catch. So it's a wide receiver scribble right there. Ooh. That lateral movement. Earned him another two, three yards up the field. A little play fake, and they throw to that far side incomplete. That was intended for Sean Clark. Low throw outside. We've seen a lot of outputs by both teams, just five-yard out routes, eight to ten-yard out routes. But when you're on the opposite hash, you really got to put some, some zip on it to get it outside those numbers on the far side. Second down and 10 from the Monmouth 43 yard line. There are only points coming on a late second quarter field goal. Deep throw, far side, caught in stride and forced out of bounds. Huge grab for the Hawks. That's Brandon Batts. Big chunk play for the Hawks. Well, as you see, Bahar looked off the safety. There was a coverage bust on the back end. You know, when you start rotating guys, when Justin Moody's a starter, you know, he gets a lot of playing time, but you really have to line up. And with Reggie White being out there making so many plays, some of the focus now is on him leaving other guys open. 39 yards on that throw. Guerrero on the carry inside the Eastern 10.
And that's why for Coach Callahan, he said, hey, the game's not over. Let's just play Hawks football, execute your offense, and just see what happens. Because you want to have some positive things to point out when you watch this film. Hawks inside the red zone for just the first time tonight. And they're at the eastern eight yard line, second and six. Bahar's going to move on his feet, trying to get the end zone. He does. Touchdown, Monmouth. That's a good decision by Bahar because. No one was open. Eastern sent about five guys. Right there, you got to maintain your outside leverage. If you're Flowers, he's a young player, and sometimes you don't understand that you got to keep the ball inside and in front. He got cut block. Guerrero with a great block. <laughs> Waiting for the placeholder to get in. So an eight yard touchdown run and the point after. And now it's a 20 point lead for Eastern Michigan. The Hawks, their first score on their first trip the field. into the red zone. Should Media say their first out. touchdown. Break here at Eastern. The Eagles leading 30 to 10 at the factory. Eastern Michigan now trying to respond after Monmouth eight points on their last two possessions. The field goal at the end of the first half, now the touchdown. All right, Chris Creighton, his halftime speech in his locker room sounded like what? Focus, fight, finish. finish. Those three words, <laughs> what he just probably said to his team at the half, and that's what he's saying right now. That's the theme of the 2018 season. And no return on the kickoff. We'll take a timeout here at Eastern Michigan. The Eagles with the football, a 20 point lead when we come back to the. Blake Bantam wearing the number two jersey tonight as opposed to his normal number 20, but his game has been top shelf all night long. Well, let's take a look. I mean, this guy making people miss in space. He's normally a kick return, pump return kind of guy, but they're going to use him a lot more in the receiving game because of what he can do when he gets the football in his hands. When he gets the ball in space, you just take a look. The first man is not going to bring him down. He's looking to shake and bake, get up field, and get a lot of yards after the catch. The deuce is loose tonight. Seven catches, 91 yards. Look at the average, though. And that's not a guy that's going to blow you away with his raw athleticism. I mean, he's strong, but a little bit undersized. So he's got to find different ways to be effective as Eastern runs on first down and doesn't generate much with Shaq Van on that touch. Shaq Van number five on the carry. Yeah, I think Eastern has to find a way to shorten this game, continue to play to win, though. But now, instead of like they were in the first half, passing on first down, getting it in second and two and three, now they're in second and 10 and 11 because they're not able to move the ball on that first play. Tyler Wiegers has taken most of the snaps. They get it to Bantam, and he explodes after the catch out to about the 34. And Mike Glass, the other quarterback that we've seen, Again, Glass has had limited reps, but between the two of them, we have not seen a drop off in quarterback play tonight from either that guy, Tyler, or Mike Glass. Quarterback play has been at a premium tonight for Eastern Michigan. They've struggled to run the football, but in the first half, they really got a good rhythm going with the play calling and the timing of the routes and all of the throws. I think they need to go back to a little more passing on first down. Bantam goes over 100 yards receiving. Shaq Van on that power run in the middle out to about the 45. It's a good run for Shaq Van in between the tackles. 
Now that was a positive play. That's nine yards on first down up the middle, but they're going to have to continue to play as if they're trying to score instead of sitting on this lead because the Hawks now have a world of confidence after scoring on their last two possessions. It's been a very fast moving third quarter. Play fake. Uyghurs open down, down the middle, wide open, caught in stride and taken down at the 15. All oh, Arthur Jackson was thinking, touchdown, taken from behind, but a big pickup for the Eagles. What well, a play action caused the back seven to get a little nosy. Eyes were in the wrong place, left the middle of the field wide open. 41 yard gain on that throw. They run and get stacked up. Van on the carry may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Big Brian Shore, he made a play right there. He, he's not going to give up. That was an excellent play up front. I mean, these, these guys in the white shirt up, up front, like I said earlier, they go 10 deep. So when you have that type of rotation, you can keep some fresh bodies in there and rotate guys in waves. Van picking his way up the middle to about the 10 yard line. If the Hawks can hold here to a field goal, I think that would give them a little bit of breathing room and some confidence. But you see Blake Benham on the field, 103 yards, a career high. Eight receptions and a touchdown. I'll keep my eyes on him running that post corner. He's right on the hash at, on the bottom of your screen. Third down and five. Wiggers looks two directions. Now he's got a roll and throw. Caught. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. He had to improvise, but he hooks up in the end zone with Matt Sexton for another Eagle score. You see Sexton made up for that other pass that he dropped. He was not going to drop this one. But right there, the Hawks defense loses contain. Tymere Berry. Lost Saxon in coverage. Sexton in coverage. And you just can't take your eyes off your man right there. But anytime you let the quarterback break the pocket, Dan, something hot can happen for the offense. You see right there, he is no one in his face until the ball is thrown. Sexton makes a good catch, ducks the defender, and finishes the play. He's had a quiet, good game, too. He made a couple tackles on special teams. Now, the Eagles are moving the football around to a lot of different receivers. Monmouth has been looking a lot to Reggie White, but Uyghurs has thrown to really pretty much anybody that's been uh, in a wide receiver position for Eastern tonight. Wiggers is distributing the ball like a point guard would in basketball. I mean, he is finding the open man. He's making great decisions. And he also knows that Mike Glass is on his heels. So I think this quarterback competition, at least coming out of training camp, has paid dividends for this Eastern offense. And, you, and you're going to need two quarterbacks in a, in a 12 game season if you're trying to reach a bowl game. Fair catch on the kickoff at the six, so they'll move it up to the 25-yard line. So the teams have traded touchdowns here in this third quarter. Eight different receivers have caught passes for Eastern Michigan. Talk about spreading the wealth around. Distribution, my friend. And that's called mixing it up, whereas on the flip side, Bahar has been focusing on Reggie White, which allowed Bats to get open in behind the defense. So you see a difference of styles on each side. 
First down, Bahar is going to throw and incomplete. Had a good look. And just could not get Reggie White on that connection. That was a good play. Jalen felt the free safety. He, he sat a little bit outside of Reggie White. <laughs> and Reggie White knows he should have caught that one. He pointed to himself and said, hey, my bad, Bahar. I'll catch it next time. But that was a great throw, though, too. Bahar near side caught underneath. Monty Moore on that grab. Gets out to, uh, let's call it the 30, call it the 35 and a Monmouth first down. He threw that one on a rope from the far hash to the sideline. That was a great pass. They'll keep it on the ground. Maybe a couple into that front front four for Eastern Michigan. Let's go back to that previous play. Here's this tackle at the end. You see him getting up the field, Lonnie Moore, but the tackle right here, you gotta be careful. Play is dead. Ross Williams put a little extra sauce on the tackle, probably got away with one right there, but you have to be smart. Yeah. Could have been a horse collar. Kyle Rockwall's already been ejected from this game for targeting. And there's a completion on first down. And the Hawks are going to pick up another first down. They go back to Lonnie Moore. And something has energized this Monmouth offense, Marcus, in this second half. And I think it was a conversation they probably had in that locker room where Coach Kevin Callahan said, hey, guys, Let's stop beating ourselves. We can play with Eastern Michigan, run our offense, but but they're playing a lot more aggressive. They're actually throwing the ball down the field and mixing in some run plays. From their own 46, a first down pickup. They keep it on the ground, and they are mixing up their offense quite a bit. It's Calhoun makes the stop, but that's Jawan Fari on the run. And the Hawks have kind of reinvented themselves offensively. First and ten. Here's a throw for White. That's nowhere near him. Out of bounds. It brings up second down and ten from the Eastern 42. I would use White as a decoy right now in this area of the field. You saw it wasn't double coverage, but but it was a zone coverage, which allowed two guys to be back there. But Bahar is playing better. And it's primarily because that offensive line is giving him time. I mean, they're really holding the fort down up front, and he's not under duress the way he was in the first half. Back on the ground. And not much on that run. Fari on the carry. On the carry. It's down to about the 40. It's going to bring up third down in about eight for Monmouth. Two big. Tyler LaBarbera, he did an excellent job from his nose guard position, playing right over the center. Play fake, Bahar throwing, complete. Maybe a yard short of the first down, but another precision pass. That one goes to Terrence Green. Yeah, they put that ball at the 34-yard line. It's fourth down and two. So many interesting call here. I think the quick out is something that they're going to rely on and maybe look at. Trying to run the ball, I think, against Eastern Michigan might not work. They're going to run, and they are not going to get a first down. Eastern with enough pressure up front. And you want to talk about spreading the wealth defensively. 21 different players for Eastern Michigan have a tackle tonight. That is an impressive statistic. 37-10, Eastern Michigan leading their football when we come back.
Eastern Michigan's defense steps up and gets the football back for the Eagles. Go! Oh! And it's Eastern football again. We <laughs> knew there would be multiple quarterbacks playing. Mike Glass is the guy who has come on occasionally to spell Tyler Wiggins, but it's been mostly Tyler, and he is under center right now. Wiegers first and 10 from his 34. They run inside. And there isn't much. Willie Parker on the run for EMU. That was a good field by Trey Nelson. This is a straight power run. Guard pulled around. That's good front seven football. Look at that. What do you think that play is? Truck, semi truck, fire truck. A lot of times those are formations, and then they, they'll get yeah. the call from uh, the You side. know I'm deferring to you on that, right? I mean, I, rec Spud I recognized Homer Simpson. <laughs> Wildcat on this set for Eastern Michigan. They get some running from the quarterback to about the 40. Yeah, it's really interesting how you can use code words. So you got... When it's, a lot of times when you see a, a fast car, it's, it's telling you to go faster, like tempo. But teams who used to put four pitchers up at a time got figured out because coaches talk, and it's first down, second down, third down, fourth down, uh, when you see four pitchers on okay. one car. EMU from their own 39. At one point, it was a 30 to nothing lead. He's going to go deep, far side, caught in stride, and take it out. Complete for Eastern Michigan. And again, they are sharing the ball. Line Latu on that catch. We didn't know what kind of impact he would make, but he's had some juice in his game. Fumbled snap, and he'll get rid of the ball wisely and throws it well enough to not take an intentional grounding. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. You know, I'm thinking maybe when we saw the picture of SpongeBob with his arms Personal out, that ball. was a spread formation. The passer. <laughs> Defense number 91, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I'm kind of rough in the pass because take a look and see with 91, the Kurt Almer. Yeah, he pushed him and the ball was gone and after a two-step little window. You know, that's where you have to be smart. You can have contact, but you can't push. And then right. you have to ask yourself, yes, you definitely answer your question, yes, but you have to ask yourself, can you make the tackle? If you can't make the tackle, then don't touch him after you throw. We got a new quarterback in there for Eastern Michigan. And that's Jarius Grissom. We knew that uh, there would be multiple players under center. Now Eastern Michigan has played three quarterbacks tonight. I think the majority of the work is done. You see Jarius Grissom out of Dearborn Heights, a freshman, 6'2", 205. You know, with this new red shirt rule, why not get him a few snaps? You're up by 27 points at home late in the third quarter. Give some guys some snaps. You can preserve your top end guys. And then these young guys can see themselves on film so they can learn. That's one of the best ways to learn is to take reps. From the Monmouth 25, they run and switch. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. Boy, a great misdirect and a quarterback keep for a score by Grissom. Yeah, let me tell you something about Eastern Michigan that we've learned through almost three quarters of football. They've got good quarterbacks. And here's one of them, a freshman, Lozon Reed, quarterback power, designed perfectly, and when he gets in the open field, he knows what to do with it. Put a little mustard on that hot dog at the end. Mm -hmm. He turned around and had something to set. Point after is good. And another Eastern Michigan quarterback looking sharp. Here on opening night. Take a look at Grissom. Nice book. Oh, he he has a burst too. 
He saw the middle of the field open. I mean, he looked like he was in a 100-meter dash the way he turned that corner and shot up the field. Then he turned around and let the official know, hey, get used to this face. I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, a lot of smiles on that Eastern Michigan sideline. I mean, he looked like a guy that's been doing it for a while. Good play caller, and that's what I like right now out of Chris Creighton and Aaron King with this offensive play calling. Is they really know how to utilize their player's skill set. If you have a quarterback that's that fast, why not get them out on the edge, on the edge with a lead blocker? They have packages for these guys, and I'm sure all three quarterbacks can, can run any system, but the way they're being utilized is on display at Eastern Michigan tonight. Jesse Kelly on the kickoff, and Monmouth will fair catch it at the four. Yeah, we've seen solid quarterback play all across the board from Eastern Michigan. They came out, and it was fairly conservative early on with uh, Tyler Uyghurs. It was just, uh, you know, short passes on the side. But uh, everybody has contributed offensively for Eastern Michigan. This has been very well balanced tonight. And what they've done is opened up the playbook. They've played a lot of players, and they're getting their stuff on film. That's the only way you know if, it's, if it works or not. You have to test it out. From the 25, Bahar will throw deep and incomplete. Closest intended receiver was Brandon Batts. Second down, but a flag on that play. And the flag is on Eastern Michigan. Or do we have offsetting? Nope, it goes against Monmouth. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Offense number 62. The penalty be half the distance to the goal. First down. That's your backup right guard, John Galena. Big fella getting some reps. Take a look on the right side, number 62. You see that right hand grabbing the face mask. Right there, he, I mean, he gets a good grab on it. They could, could have called holding as well. Big fella's got to open that fist. Lower your hands and stay at the pad level. Well, back to about the 13. They'll run it, and they'll get a nice run on that far side. Unfortunately, only gets him back to just shy of the original line of scrimmage. But that's, well, that's a good gain on first down to at least get it back to a, a manageable second and long. Eastern Michigan was in a softer defense, long yardage defense. Now it looks like they're bringing a little heat. Second down and 12 from the 22. Monmouth's offense came late in the first half on a field goal and a touchdown in the first possession of the third quarter. Here's Fari again. This time he gets more space and right to that first down marker at the 35. Fari showing a little wiggle in the open field. Getting that ball off tackle. I mean, the Hawks are lining up the up and trips to the wide side of the field and running it short. And it's there. They're at the 34. So it uh, is just third down and about three yards. They'll keep it on the ground and they will get right to that first down marker at the 36. And the chains will move for Monmouth. Yeah, our coaches talked with Kevin Callahan this week, Marcus. We did not expect a ferry to That's come on third gangbusters like he has tonight. Well, you see, Big Devell Jones was able to third get, get a run. Third quarter is in the books here at Eastern Michigan, and a timeout will come back with our fourth quarter, a 44-10 lead here for Eastern Michigan.
Lots of offense in the third quarter, but Eastern Michigan still with the very comfortable 44 10 lead here. Monmouth football, the Hawks have been playing from behind from the get go. A 30 to nothing start for Eastern. Charge timeout, Eastern Michigan. Eastern That's will take a timeout, timeout here. Half. And ESPN app is now with ESPN Plus. It'll be a 30 second more ESPN timeout. and download that app now. Only $4.99 a month. Boy, if you are a college football fan, that is uh, worth it in every which way. You can get all kinds of football that, uh, you know, in the old days, the really old days, not the Marcus Ray old days. I mean, before that. Right. Because I'm mean, not that old. No, nah, I know that. <laughs> I mean, the national championship ring says what? 1997, yeah. yes. <laughs> But I got, it, it's still fresh for you, though. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's forever young for me. I, I'll, I'll never forget that run. But I got my su subscription already for ESPN Plus. I don't want to miss a game. I'm putting mine on your tab. There's a big run up the middle as Monmouth stays on the ground, and they continue to really create some opportunities here. That's Vinny Grasso on the run. Man, they're in hurry-up mode here for Monmouth. And they throw a little too far on that far side. A little too hot for Brandon Bats. See Coach Callahan staying encouraged, coaching his guys up. Been around a long time. He knows what to do with this film. It was a 12-yard run by Grasso. Second down and 10 from their own 48 yard line. Little trickery, they're going to run. Bats around the end, and he gets clocked at about the Eastern 48. They're in a jet sweep right there. It was good pursuit. From the Eastern Michigan secondary. You see on third down what they go to here. See, right now at this point of the game, then this is where you start playing situational football. What would you do? You scratch the scoreboard and say, what would you do if you were still in this game? Something you want to see and get on film, something you've repped a, a ton of plays in practice. Now, this is the time where you get some guys in, but you really just run your stuff. And they run, they get some good space there. And again, it's Grasso. Calhoun on the tackle for Eastern Michigan. Grasso gets it inside the 45 to about the 43. And that's a gain of five. It is fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and one. Oh, how college football has changed where even offensive linemen get their checks from the sideline. They turn and look. Quick throw, caught, first down, pick up. Not a great throw, but complete for a Monmouth first down to Quentin Parham. And that's keeping Monmouth's offense on the field. They're inside the 40 to the Eastern 37. And they're going tempo. They'll run. Grasso looking for some space. Gets a little bit near side. Inside the 30. <laughs> that play took a long time to develop. It. Grasso showed some, some patience and vision. He was able to still get that corner with the help of some good downfield blocking by wideouts. And that's a nine-yard pickup. A 
and they're at the 28 yard line. Bahar with time throws a tight throw far side complete Lonnie Moore out of bounds first down for the Hawks. Lonnie Moore has been one of his secondary targets in this game for Kenji Bahar makes me wonder how long they're going to keep him in this game moving forward being that he's the starting quarterback but they want to get him as many reps as possible too. Because they have a pretty tough schedule coming up. Playoff team a year ago. This team can make another run because they have all the right parts. Bahar throwing. Gets to that same spot. Terrence Green. Comeback route complete. And Kevin Callahan. You know, just looking for some more precision. Not a great first half of football execution wise, but they tighten things up a little bit, I would say, in this second half. Yeah, and they're going to have to figure out what's going on in their secondary where guys are running free, giving up big plays. Screen passes broken up. Fari was intended for that. Chris uh, Creighton, the Eastern Michigan head coach, what do you think are his the pass, learning right? points about Defense. his team today, Marcus? Well, well number one is offense can be very down. dynamic, and depending on who they play, Correction. they have After three different distance. quarterbacks, two in particular when you talk about Uyghurs and Glass. But I, I think he's starting off the year on the right foot. They were able to move the ball efficiently when it mattered the most in the beginning of the game. His defense played extremely well, only gave up a couple of plays, and that's what you want to see as a head coach. So I think he's got some guys on film, and this team has an identity. They have two running backs and some good receivers. Pump fake and caught at the five. Four set of bounds. It's Grasso. Now, at this point of the game, Eastern Michigan is not blitzing. When you have backup guys in there, you just want to play base defense. That's just a regular call where you're not sending any pressure. You're lining up playing zone, rushing four guys. But now at this point, you can work on your goal line defense. What would you call versus this formation, regardless of what the scoreboard says? They'll keep it on the ground, and they're running for the edge. Did they get him in? They did. Touchdown. Monmouth on the ground, and Devell Jones will carry it, but a flag on the play. Holding. Offense number 10. 10 yard penalty. Second down. So much for that. Yeah, that's Quentin Parham with the holding. And that's been the story for Coach Callahan today. You take two steps forward and three backwards after a positive play. So they get moved back to the 15 yard line where it's second down. Play fake and zone incomplete. Threw a rope there to Brandon Bats, but could not thread the needle quite well enough. Well, the play action on that fake run held those linebackers and opened up the middle of the field. Kenji Bahar threw it a little bit behind Bats because he had the defensive back beat on the post route. Let's take a look at it here. Good ball, but Hubbard was able to. Get a left hand in there, sophomore out of Ann Arbor, Pioneer High School. That's a good play. Third and goal from the 15. Little throw underneath, and Fari is brought down from behind. Good tackle to blow up that play. That's Teron Rush. Rush with a 
Nice play. Young guy out of West Virginia. He was able to snuff out that screen pass. Hey, when you see linemen down the field, if you're playing defense, that is screen. And if you're a D lineman and they let you go, you have to retrace your steps. And that's what that young man did on that play. Mascara comes on for the field goal, and it is no good. Kicked in wide right. We'll break here at Eastern Michigan. 44-10 is our fourth quarter score. The Eagles leading the Hawks. Eastern Michigan's 30 to nothing second quarter lead has held up nicely for them. 44-10 is our fourth quarter score. And there has been a lot of good things happening from that quarterback position tonight. Again, that's from three different players that have taken snaps under center. And if this continues, you see they can break the school record completion percentage. 88 percent on 25 passes. Wow. And this is Mike Glass and Eastern Michigan completing that throw. Not a throw, but a keep. So it's Eastern Michigan with, uh, again, a lot of diversity in their offense so far tonight. And one of the things I really like is they've taken care of the football and they haven't turned it over. I mean, that's going to be key because when they get into another close game, which is going to happen, like, like Coach Creighton told us, they know they're going to be in some tight ball games. They're going to need to take care of the ball. Erickson tries to get the edge and then turns it back in. Short of the 30. Close to a first down, though, maybe about a yard short. Very solid performance all the way around. And I think Eastern has shown that they can be a balanced team, too. They distributed the ball all over the field. They've mixed it up, ran it inside, showed a little trick play, some wide receiver screens. They're getting it all in. Quarterback runs. Play fake by Glass. Now pressure. And he'll throw a jump ball out of bounds. Smart play. Quarterback was outside the tackle box. This pass might be on the line of scrimmage. No foul. Backed up a little bit. So fourth and one brings out the punting team for Eastern Michigan. Coach Creighton not happy with that third down lack of execution, but that was good defense on the other end by the Hawks. Julian, oh, he kicks a beauty. All the way back at the 12 to catch it. But it stretches out the Eastern punt coverage unit, and it's returned to about the 28. That was an excellent punt. Flipped the field for his defense. Quarterback switch for Monmouth, Brandon Harris coming on. Play fake on first down, ball tipped and caught by Terrence Green. And Brandon Harris out of the Bronx. Sophomore coming in, just letting it rip. Run your offense. 6 2, good looking kid, 195. Not much pressure on a quarterback in this situation. True? Very true. I mean, but you still don't want to have any errant throws, but you're not going to be asked to do much except execute. But Ferry hits that middle hole hard and explodes for a Monmouth first down to their 44 yard line. And right here, you just want to be smart. You don't want to get in a hurry. 
Because now at this point, you want to end the game on a high note. So you don't want to throw a pick six or put the ball on the ground. Just try to keep moving the chain. Good throw. It's a short throw to Castronova. Now with uh, Reggie White not being in the game for the last few series, get a chance to see some of these other receivers, what they can do. But we know when number nine's in the game, he's one. He's the major focal point in the past game. And now you get to some of these other players getting a chance to prove that they can be relied on as well. They'll run and they'll get a good run on third down into Eastern Territory. Maybe a yard or two short though. Third and two coming up. It looks like. Ooh, look at that score. Uh oh. That's Special up timeout. the road. Well, upset alert. Oh, my. Michigan would love that, wouldn't they? The Sparty. Y'all, yeah, I think they would love it, but this. That wouldn't be good for the Big Ten overall, but Utah State's very competitive. They return like 19 guys, 18, just as many as Michigan State. They're looking to get one. You better be careful. Well, a great weather night here in Ypsilanti, and uh, everybody made out well. There's the injured Brandon Harris holding his right knee. Boy, that's time out of the field. something you never Media want to see out. in week one. There's a guy with an injury. We'll take a break here in Ypsilanti. It's a 44-10 lead for Eastern Michigan. Forty-four ten is our fourth quarter score here at Linearson Stadium and a three-game road swing coming up for Eastern. They go to Purdue, and then they'll start conference play against Buffalo, and then a long trip out west to San Diego State. So that makes winning this game paramount. And now the third-string quarterback is in for Mac for a Monmouth, Max Smith, and Fari is on the run for. The Hawks. Well, I think Eastern Michigan has given Purdue something to think about next week. You know, after watching Purdue and Northwestern last night, I really think that Eastern can, you know, they can go down to West Lafayette and make it happen. See Max Smith, 6'5", 215, sophomore, out of New Jersey, getting some action. Hawks working from their 44. Fari on the carry inside the 40 boy that young man has made a very good impression on the Hawks coaches. Oh yeah he's he's going to add a lot of depth and he's going to be a switch up for this offense. When you look at Guerrero and the rest of this offense they find another running back. It's going to get very interesting. Second down from the EMU 39 yard line. And they run Fari wide. Stays up. Now he's put down. So we have seen a lot of different quarterbacks. Six quarterbacks combined in this game. For Eastern Michigan, that's more or less by design. And that's been a luxury for them. Monmouth staying with their number one. Kenji Behar for most of this game. And I think even throughout the weekend. In our first full weekend of college football, you're going to see. A lot of players. The officials take a time out here. At the factory out, in Ypsilanti. Monmouth. Fourth That's quarter football. Eastern that. leading Monmouth 44 to 10.
A great weather night here at Eastern Michigan, and the football has been very good from the Eagles' vantage point. Cheerleaders have been cheering their hearts out tonight. And the little guys. Young fellas. Getting their game on. And the ladies. Look at them. A lot of families here, move-in day. Great day to have a football game. Max Smith under center. After the injury to Brandon Harris. Inside the 40, there's the run, exploding up the middle. Ferry on the carry, touchdown, Monmouth. Well, I'll tell you what, with Fari, all bets are off. The ceiling for this kid is just taken off. I tell you what, he was knocking on the door all night, but look at this hole. Great blocking, good vision, and forget about it. Up the middle, good call, too. I mean, he, he's had the hot hand in the second half. And he showed right there that, that why he needs to be on the field getting more carries. But when you got two running backs like that, they're going to be tough to stop offensively. PAT is good. And a run that Monmouth fans will enjoy quite a bit. Picked up a good block from Quentin Parham, too, because if you remember on Jones's touchdown, Parham was guilty of a holding that time. Mm. He made up for it and, and really made the block. That's from far. Pretty long road trip for Monmouth coming all the way from uh, New Jersey and the East Coast. Got those loyal football moms, baby. Yeah. Wish they had a little more to smile about, but. That run was a keeper for sure. He's not real happy. Eastern, Eastern is celebrating a little bit in the stadium, as they should be. Their team came out, the band is rocking. Fireworks going off every time they score points. It's cannons, baby. Fire those cannons. <laughs> Her catch inside the 10. That'll put the ball at the 25 yard line. With this new rule, I'd be surprised if, if, if you see any kickoff returns. I mean, there's been a lot of fair catching. I mean, unless you, you're playing against a team that feels like they can take it to the house. Yeah, I wonder if that is going to make it difficult for coaches who will have to make a decision as to this kind of a situational decision as to when to say, okay, under these parameters, that's when you can return it. Because I'm going to tell you, Dan, give, uh, turning down the 25-yard line start, that's going to be hard to do considering all the years college football had kickoff return and guys getting tackled at the 14 or the 18. Quarterback keep and a good pickup on that run. This is Mike Glass under center. Yeah, and the other thing is, uh, if you're a, if you're a, a kick return specialist, you know that's kind of your bread and butter. You don't you don't want that taken off your plate. So yeah. you you gotta you know you hope you have a coach that's gonna give you that green light to say hey look you get it at the five you go. And then now how much time do you really spend in practice with special teams when you kick mm -hmm. off? Yeah. Yeah. If you know you're just gonna default to that fair catch. Play fake and a quarterback keep on the ground again. This is Glass. And again, we should mention Eastern has played three quarterbacks. Primary quarterback tonight, Tyler Wiegers. He was very good. The guy under center right now, Mike Glass, he's been very good. 
So they've gotten a lot of good productivity at quarterback. That's Eastern's first down in this, uh, the first first down in the first in the fourth quarter. And the thing is, Coach Craig has figured out that he's went to the transfer fountain to find some of these quarterbacks, and it's working out so far. You talk about Uyghurs transferring from Iowa. Didn't really get a chance to play very much behind Bender, Rudock, and those guys. Found a home at Eastern Michigan, and in his debut, I think he showed up and showed out. Ball spotted at the 40-yard line on second down after the dropped handoff to Glass. Again, Mike Glass kind of zoomed up the depth chart for Eastern Michigan. And he's getting some good reps tonight in this opening game for the Eagles. And he sells that one well, but it's an Eastern run and take it out of bounds and that's probably a horse collar tackle. See Brandon Harris can't tackle like that. See Brandon Harris mm. getting. That's a very very bad sign for Monmouth. Their backup quarterback only in for one series and he'll have some uh, major Examinations done for him. Fifteen yard penalty be added to the end of the run. First down. You know, I think that's a makeup call. I think these officials let Eastern get away with one earlier. You know, not intentionally. It's just take a look right here. To Shaq Van making people miss. Getting a great block from Marshall, but right there, the play's over. You cannot put any extra hot sauce. Let me ask you this. Is it still a horse collar tackle if you're only grabbing the jersey? Yes. Okay. I, I think it's anything that where you're slinging them down from behind. Okay. Deep ball and no flag. And when in doubt, you have to call it. When in doubt, throw it. Air on the side of safety. And that's just not proper tackle. I mean, football's a game where, you, you know, you get the guy down any way you can, but when you're on the sideline late, late in the game, but that's excellent coverage right there. Down the field, Eastern trying to get one more on the board before they get out of here. Look at this run in open space and turning it back. Glass again continues to run. A late flag is thrown. Boy, I'll tell you something. Uyghurs look very good. Glass looks very good in a different kind of dimension. That's right. And we're about to show you right here. Watch this two step. The old school. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's that in and out. Holding. Move. That's that double Offense crossover. number 81. Mike. 10 yard penalty. Mike Glass. Oh. Second down. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, he just. And, and, and that's and that's a pretty good athlete, Dewan Cooper, number eight. I mean, he had him on skates with a one-two step. Sadly, it's all for naught. As the ball comes out to the 24, 26-yard line. And this is the part of the game where the penalties get a little skewed both ways. When you go back and check the stats. Glass on the handoff. And Van trying to stay up. He does. Finally taken out of bounds. Way to extend the play for Shaq Van for EMU. It's good to see that young man healthy, doing what he does best, getting on that perimeter, using showing some wiggle. And even in, you know, this late in the game, he needs some game reps. Ball at the 16 yard line, Eastern Michigan, a 30 to nothing lead was all the cushion they would need tonight. Play fake glass, one man to beat on the near side and pylon 
one. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. From 16 yards out. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to use the term quarterback controversy. That's kind of the wrong word. What I'm saying, Marcus, is you got two quarterbacks that play high-level football in very different ways. And that's a good problem to have because they're going to cause most defensive coordinators nightmares to game plan for Eastern Michigan because you don't know who you're going to see. And you, don't, you only have so many hours in practice. So the PAT is good and the Eagles break the half century mark, 51 points. You, see you know what? Uh, saying, way to finish. Way ab to finish. Absolutely. We're going to take another look back at Mike Glass. Watch the rear view. Oh, in and out. Oh, right there. And that's where you have to come to balance as a defender. But that's what Glass can do. And he's still in the game so that he can get game reps. Because they're going to utilize both quarterbacks moving forward, depending on who they play. And let's say if, if it's midseason and Uyghurs isn't having a good game, or maybe the game plan for Glass to run the ball could work best versus Western Michigan. It just depends on the game plan. But now when he's not shaking and baking, he's laying out going airborne. Yeah. I mean, that's a wide receiver move right there. He was determined to get in that end zone, so he's done it by land. And by by, yes. He says, I'm getting my six. I'm going to get mine. Yeah. I'll get it on the ground. <laughs> I'll get it in the air. It doesn't matter. And no return on that kick. And we're trying to collectively think if we've had even had a kickoff return tonight. That is in question right now. And Smith under center for Monmouth. Smith on the play fake. He'll unload it, and it is way out of reach and he had pressure coming that stops the clock second down and 10 for Monmouth yeah we did the math two returns off of kickoffs 68 points so that might be a trend that we'll keep tabs on during this uh, college football season. 12 kickoffs, two returns. Thanks to our guys in the truck for doing the quick math. You had a kickoff return game, maybe no more. Because if you kick it in the end zone, they're going down. Which is different in the NFL. Those guys, you're kicking in the end zone, they're bringing it out. Mm -hmm. 109 yards, but college football has made some rule changes, and we've seen them on display tonight. Eastern Michigan's quarterback by committee completing over 80% of their passes tonight. Which is a new school record. Mm -hmm. Fari on the run, pushed out at the 30. 536. Young man Fari still playing hard. Only 17 ticks left. You see both coaches, headsets off. Game like this, you wanted you wanted to end in a good Good manner, no more injuries, one more play. Fari stays on the ground. Fari on the carry. Eagle attack. 
And that's going to end our football game here at the factory. Eastern Michigan with a convincing win in their home opener. And they did it with versatility. Not a one or two party domination. This was 11 guys on offense and 11 guys on defense. Definitely a team effort. When you look at all three phases of the game, both teams coming together in a hard fought battle. I mean, the majority of the action happened in the second half for Monmouth, but Eastern came out and fired offensively with a 95 yard drive that just set the tone with precision passing, play calling. Eastern Michigan, a dominant performance in this game tonight. Thanks to our analyst, Marcus Ray, I'm Dan Gatowski. We say so long from Ypsilanti, the factory. Final score, 51-17. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app. Or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watch ESPN.com.